Welcome, everybody. My name is Valerie Chow, and I'm the program director for internship program and civic engagement at the Barna Career Development Office. And we're here today to talk about internships, learning outside of the classroom. I hope everyone's having a good weekend with your students. You know, the weather is quite nice outside, a little bit chilly, but it's nice. Um, and uh, first, I just wanted to introduce our student panelists for, for today. So if you guys can just introduce yourselves. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Barnard. I'm Aditi Shankar. I'm a senior and a bio major. Hi, I'm Clara Fram. I'm a senior at Barnard. I'm an environmental science major. Can you speak up? I'm, I'm, uh, my, <laughs> I'm uh, Clara Fram. I'm a senior at Barnard, an environmental science major, and I'm from San Francisco. Hi, I'm Joy Harrison. I'm a junior. Um, I'm majoring in Spanish and Latin American cultures with a minor in psychology, and I'm from Massachusetts. So we'll be hearing from the student panelists later on in the presentation, but I just wanted to have them introduce themselves first. So I just wanted to talk about what we're going to be talking about today, um, and just to give you an idea of what we'll be spending our time on today. Uh, the mic is not actually on, it's just for the recording this session for um, their purposes, and it's, the mic is not really on. <laughs> I'll just shout. Um, oh, and that's another student panelist, her name is Ellen. Um, and Ellen's a senior, um, and she's majoring in political science? Economics and political science. science. Okay. Um, so welcome everybody again. So today we'll be giving you an overview of the Barnard Career Development Office, and then we'll be talking about some of the programs that we run out of our office, and then of course we'll be talking about internships, and also funding opportunities for unpaid internships, which is quite important for students, and also We'll be turning to a student panel and asking them some questions. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll be taking some questions from you guys. So first, I just wanted to give you an overview of our office. We have 13 staff members, full-time and part-time, in our office, including eight professional counselors that meet with students. Um, our mission is up there, is to support women in cultivating a career of their own invention that connects a liberal arts education, leadership, and work-life planning. Um, and you know, we really want to empower students to be able to make decisions about their career development. And you know, in order to do that, of course, we have a whole array of programs that uh, we do out of our office. Uh, first of all, we do weekly career development workshops out of our office. For example, we do how to uh, craft a resume, how to craft a cover letter, internship job search strategies, and also interview techniques. And that's uh, every week in our office, you know, students can just sign up for a workshop and come in for an hour and learn about these strategies. Um, of course, we do career counseling, individual career counseling out of our office. Um, and we have peer career advisors who help us in that effort. Um, Ellen Liu is a peer career advisor in our office, and they are students who are trained in baseline career counseling such as resume critique, cover letter critique, interview techniques, and job search strategies. And our drop-in hours for our office have been extended this year. Because of the downturn economy, we want to provide a lot of service to our students. So students can come in anytime from Monday to Thursday between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m., and then on Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And when they come in, they'll be able to meet with a peer career advisor and chat about whatever that they, they're concerned about, if they wanted to resume critiques, cover letter, anything like that. Um, and we really like our peer career advisors because we think that they provide, they, they kind of establish a more open, engaging environment for our office because some students may be intimidated to come in and talk to a counselor, but if it's like a peer career counselor, they're more likely to come in and engage with them. And if your student want to meet with a professional staff member, of course they can come in on Monday to Fridays between 12 and 2. Um, anytime they don't need to make an appointment, they come in and meet with a professional counselor. And if they do make an hour long appointment, then they can just call our front desk and we will accommodate them and meet with them for an hour and chat about whatever that they want to chat about in terms of career development. Um, and I just wanted to point out that we have a campus recruitment team. We hired a um, professional recently whose main job is to um, develop employer relations so that we have a lot of employers uh, come on campus and recruit Barnard students. And one of the efforts that we do uh, in, campus, in the campus recruitment team is that we have the career fair. 
and that's a very important date, January 26th. It's the second week after students get back from winter break, so definitely encourage your students to come to the career fair. We're going to have a lot of employers on campus, um, and students can come and meet with employers to talk about spring semester internships, summer internships, as well as job opportunities for seniors. Um, so that's definitely going to be a great event where a lot of employers are going to come and students can network and learn about employers. Um, Aside from our Barnard career, uh, career fairs, uh, Barnard students can also go to Columbia's career fair. Um, Columbia had their general career fair in September, and we had a great Barnard showing at that career fair. A lot of students took advantage of that. They also had an engineering career fair, I believe, a couple of weeks ago. Our students can go to that one. They also are hosting a nonprofit career fair in March, and our students are definitely encouraged to go to that one as well. So there are a lot of career fairs right here at Barnard and also across the street at Columbia that your students can take advantage of. Um, another way where how that we bring uh, employers onto campus is through information sessions. We have employers come usually in the evening to speak about their organization or their company and to uh, encourage students to apply for internships or job positions at their um, organization. So that that's happening right now. We you know we have multiple employers come on campus, um, you know, from financial companies to fashion companies, just a whole array. And then Barnard students can also go to uh, Columbia University's information sessions. So there's a lot of things to choose from in terms of information sessions. Um, so the next program that I wanted to highlight is the MAPS program, Matching Alumni to Partner with Students. And this is a pilot program last year and it's been very, very successful, we feel. Um, first, under the MAPS umbrella, we do a mentoring program where we pair a student with an alumni in the field that the, the student is interested in. And that mentoring relationship is for the whole academic year. And during that year, we host events where the alumni and the student can you know, meet and mingle and speak about any career development issues that they want to talk about. Um, for example, last weekend we had a brunch um, on Saturday on campus and a lot, you know, 20 plus alumni came and then students were there and we just all mingled and it was a great success. Um, we also do careers and coffee where we bring in alumni and also actually parents to come and speak to students about um, their careers in their field and you know it's usually a very intimate setting where students are able to ask questions and um, the presenters are able to discuss their career fields in a very frank manner in a very intimate setting. And then the third event that we do under the MAPS program is Take a Barnard Student to Work Day. This is kind of a playoff of Take Your Daughter <laughs> to Work Day, uh, where in the spring we're going to have students um, shadow alumni for a few hours, usually in the, in the, you know, in, uh, the alumni's workplace, and just to get a feel of what it would be like to work in the alumni's industry. Um, and this program was very successful last year. For example, we have a student um, go to an alumni's workplace that's a, a bank, and then she went and she actually met with the alumni, of course, and then got to meet with the hiring manager there as well during her visit. And they were so impressed with her that they you know, called her in for additional interviews after the visit, and she was able to obtain a full-time job there afterwards. So these are you know, definitely programs that um, enable students to expand their professional network and hopefully to get internships and professional opportunities out of them, you know, in addition to career development advice. Um, we also have the Barnard Experience for Seniors in Transition, the best program for seniors. Um, and this is just a program where, you know, we help seniors make the transition out, out, out of Barnard into either, you know, a career um, or a graduate school. Um, situation. So out of the, uh, under the best umbrella, we do the Senior Initiative Program. The Senior Initiative Program is for seniors, obviously, and seniors enrolled in that program have to take four core workshops with career development, such as marketing yourself, job search in the tough economic times, um, and then they also have to take four electives. And they can take, uh, actually, two electives, sorry, four core workshops, two electives. And the electives can be from the Athena Center for Leadership. They run a lot of labs that are very um, beneficial to students in terms of developing the professional development skills. And they can also go to another event, such as you know a human resources panel discussion or something like that. Um, so we find that students who have participated in the Senior Initiative program in the past have been very, very successful in finding employment after um, Barnard. So it's definitely a great program as well. Um, I just wanted to mention the student employment program as well from our office. This is where we help students um, obtain on-campus um, employment, so um, you know any kind of on-campus job. Um, and we had 
900 students go through the program last year, so a lot of students do, you know, do an on-campus job to earn some money and skills through their positions. Um, and I also wanted to mention the New York City Civic Engagement Program. Um, I'm the program director of this program. <laughs> and this is just a program to encourage students to become civically engaged in New York City and to give back a little bit to the community. Uh, for example, um, perhaps a lot of your students participated in the Barnard Reach Out program back in September where we um, did a weekend of community service projects out in different service agencies in the city. And we're also doing the extended Barnard Reach Out program right now where we meet weekly for um, seminars where we discuss civic engagement issues and then we also do more service projects and site visits. Um, and the last thing that we, oh, another thing that we do for the civic engagement program is that we send out a weekly newsletter highlighting internship, volunteer, and job opportunities in the public interest sector. So there, you know, there's a lot of programs that we run out of the Career Development Office. I just wanted to highlight some of these. Um, and I also wanted to mention that we actually have an alumni counselor as well. So after your students graduate from Barnard, they can still use our office through our alumni counselor. She meets with alumni who come into the office for appointments. She does resume review, job search strategies, everything with them. So, you know, we are kind of a lifelong service for your students. Um, so I just wanted to move into the internship discussion. Um, what is an internship? Well, an internship is basically any position that provides your student with a career-related learning opportunity. It can be in any area. Um, you know, it's it's very broad definition. So um, a lot of positions are considered internships. So why are internships important? I mean, you guys are all here, so I'm pretty sure that you know that they are important. Um, but you know, just to highlight some of the things that we think why makes in, what, what, what makes internships important is that uh, internships will help your student focus their career goals and prepare for life after college. They will help your students gain practical work experience, develop skills and an understanding of different work cultures. Um, you can, your students can definitely develop contacts and or mentors through their internship experiences. And a lot of times internship positions do lead to full-time employment opportunities. Um, either, you know, maybe your student will be summering at the, uh, a bank and then they will be hiring your student for the full-time uh, after the senior year, or, you know, your student develop a very close relationship with their supervisor and the supervisor helps your student, you know, find placement in another organization. So um, definitely very important to have uh, uh, to have done the internships during the college years. Our office recommends that by um, a student's senior year, they should have at least a couple of internship experiences under the belt in order to maximize the chances of getting a good employment opportunity when they're seniors. Um, so <laughs> how do students go about finding internships at Barnard? Um, we have multiple resources, and the most important one is a system called NACELINK. NACELINK is a password protected website that, uh, where we post job and internship and volunteer opportunities that are aimed at Barnard students. So an employer will send us an internship or a job description and then we'll post it on NACELINK um, and then students are able to search for internships and jobs that way. Um, and this is a nice little figure that <laughs> uh, we like to point out. Um, during the last academic year, 2009 to 2010, we posted 1,387 internship positions on our website. And this is not including internship positions that uh, students find on their own outside of NACELINK. I mean, New York City is just, there's so many opportunities in the city that, you know, it's relatively easy for students uh, at Barnard to find internship opportunities. Um, another way that we help students find internships is through the workshops that we run that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. We run weekly workshops on how to find an internship or how to find a job. So in that workshop, your students are going to get more resources and information on how they can go about finding internships. And we also definitely encourage networking. Um, networking is actually very, very important right now in this economy. A lot, as we all know, sometimes it's, you know, who you know. Um, so, you know, we encourage students to reach out to their parents, their parents' friends, their peers, their peers' parents, their supervisors from previous internships, and definitely keep those contacts and start networking and, you know, building a professional network so that it will help them uh, when they do uh, look for job opportunities when they're seniors. Okay, so um, a lot of internships are actually unpaid and we want to stress that, you know, 
it's not really about what you're getting paid as an intern. It's really about the experience and what you can gain from that internship that will help you later on when you are a senior looking for a full-time opportunity. So, um, but we do understand that a lot of students are unable to engage in an unpaid internship because it takes so much time and not everyone is able to do an unpaid position. So I just wanted to uh, introduce you to some of the programs that we have at Barnard, um, you know, for some funding, funding opportunities that everyone is interested in. So the first program is the Barnard College Alumni and Donor Sponsored Internship Grant Program. And this is a program that's a collaboration between our office and alumni and individual and foundation donors who are interested in the career development of Barnard women. Um, so under the program, we have um, a, a wide array of grants. Um, some are very specific. Some donors want to restrict to student to give uh, a grant to students who are doing internships in the arts, for example, or in science and math, or in public service. But we also have a lot of grants that are general. So for example, we've had students who have interned at investment banks who have gotten a grant from us. And that's, you know, as long as it's an unpaid internship, then they can apply for a grant. So for the last uh, last year's grant cycle, which means for the fall semester, spring semester, and summer, we awarded over $270,000 to 151 students doing intern unpaid internships. So it's a fairly big, large program, and we believe that this year is going to be even larger. So it is a great resource for students who are interested in doing an unpaid internship. So just some logistics and details about this program so that you can inform your students about it. Um, the grant amount for the fall and spring semester is $800. Um, and then for the summer, it's going to be $2,000 and highly subsidized on campus college housing. So if your student is planning on staying in New York City over the summer and you know they want to do an internship over the summer, then we definitely encourage them to apply because you know the housing component is quite attractive but you know if they're going off campus they're going abroad they can still apply for the program we have intern we have grants for example aimed at students doing internships in washington dc or going abroad so they don't have to be staying in new york but if they are staying in new york then this is definitely something that they, they should consider um, who can apply well Pretty much all Barnard College students can apply for this program, but uh, sh it should be noted that first years can only apply starting for the summer internships. And this is because um, our office's stance is that um, we encourage first year students to focus on their academics during the school year to kind of get their bearings um, at Barnard and get used to the rigorous college academic you know curriculum before they start really diving into internships so we think that the um, the earliest that uh, students should consider doing an internship is their summer after the first year um, so but you know but the students can first years sophomores juniors and seniors can apply for this program um, so how, how do students apply? It's a merit-based application process. There is an application. Unfortunately, we're not able to award every student with a grant, so we do have to have a, a selection process. Um, so uh, your student would have to fill out a fairly short application where they discuss you know, where they're interning, what they'll be doing at their internship, and um, how they think that the internship is going to help them in terms of their career development. So those are the factors that we look at. You know, um, does, your, is it, does your student explain how the internship is going to help them achieve their career goals in the future? And you know, what are the, what's the substance of the internship? Um, and we also focus on the professionalism of the presentation of the application, because we ask for a resume as well as an application. So we want to treat this like a job application process. If, For example, if there's a typo in the resume, chances are you're not going to be getting a grant from us. Because if you send a resume with a typo to an employer, you, your resume is going to be thrown in the trash. It's just kind of the same um, process, and we want students to get used to that. Um, so. Once a student is accepted to the grant program, we do have some grant requirements that we require students to fulfill. For example, uh, students are required to post discussions on an online discussion community every week, um, and they're required to attend some professional development events in our office or off campus. Um, it's quite flexible. And then they also have to make a presentation on their internship position to donors <laughs> in, uh, in the spring. So we hope that these grant requirements um, are going to help students in their career development and it's not just kind of homework for students. Um, so I just wanted to highlight a few of the more specialized grants under the grant program. Um, these grants actually 
have a little bit more rigorous requirement, but they give students a little bit more money. <laughs> um, so for example, the Jewish Foundation for the Education of Women, um, they gave us a grant to give to students who are interested in doing internships um, related to the sciences. So um, it can be a hard science or it can be, you know, uh, uh, a student did, went to an architecture firm last last summer and was able to get a grant through through this program. But this this grant is directed towards students from the New York City area and who are on students who are on financial aid. Um, so students will receive thirty five hundred dollars through this grant, and um, they have to have do additional requirements like they came on campus twice to attend seminars. They came for a welcome dinner and then there was a closing reception and things like things like that. Um, the second specialized grant I wanted to highlight is the Daniel and Florence Guggenheim Foundation Internships in Criminal Justice <laughs> grant. Um, and this grant uh, is co-sponsored. It's actually host, housed at, at Princeton University. And um, Princeton students, Columbia, and Barnard students are eligible for this grant. And um, students who are accepted to this grant program are uh, placed in New York City area nonprofit criminal justice organizations. And they get $400 per week, a weekly stipend, and they get to go on site visits. Like this summer, I think they went to a Rikers <laughs> prison to do a site visit, and then they have speakers come in and speak to the students and seminars and things of that nature. Um, and then the last one, last grant that I wanted to highlight is the Arthur Lyman Public Interest Undergraduate Summer Fellowship Program. Um, and this program is actually housed at Yale University, and six colleges are uh, eligible, six, six undergraduate universities are um, involved in this program. So it's Yale, Barnard, Brown, Harvard, Princeton, and Spelman. So students who are accepted to the program do an internship over the summer in um, public interest law. And they're also invited to attend a public interest law colloquium at Yale Law School in the spring. So it's quite a prestigious program and you know they get um, $3,000 for the summer to do this program. And actually the Dean of Studies um, office heads this program. The pre-law dean, Christina Kwan Su, is the contact person for this, but I'm also on their selection committee. So you know we work in a collaborative manner to run this program. So I just wanted to also point out some other um, sample internship funding opportunities at Barnard and Columbia. Um, the programs that I just spoke about, you know, the career development has a role in, um, in those programs, but these are programs outside of career development. For example, the Athena Summer Fellowship Programs for juniors. Um, it's for the summer after uh, junior year, so it's for, for juniors who want to do an internship in a wide array of fields. Um, it doesn't matter which field, but they get $4,000 and it's a 10 week program. So, and it's uh, it's great because the Athena Center has a lot of connections with um, a lot of lead women leaders in the New York City. So they do, you know, have a lot of speakers come and speak to the fellows and additional opportunities like that. Uh, the Van Amsen Service Fellowship, uh, Claire was actually a recipient of it this summer. It's um, housed at the Community Impact Organization based in Columbia and they they, uh, and this grant is available to Barnard and Columbia students working at nonprofit organizations for the summer, and they get $3,000 plus on-campus housing for that grant. And then the last one that I wanted to point out is the Weatherhead Undergraduate Training Grant. And this is sponsored by the Weatherhead East Asians Institute at Columbia University, and it provides up to $2,500 in support of uh, undergraduate students who are doing summer projects in East Asia. So there's just a wide array of funding opportunities available to your students and you know we definitely want students to engage in internships even if they are unpaid. Um, and I just wanted to point out it's not on the presentation but we have a brand new grant <laughs> that we just um, launched this week and it's the Tao, um, Tao Foundation Special Professional Opportunities Fund and it's only available to Barnard students. And what that is, is that if your students are interested in joining a professional association or attending an off-campus conference that requires registration, or even if it's in another city, um, they can apply for this grant, and then if they're successful, we'll fund the whole trip to the conference, or you know, we'll pay the professional association membership due for them. So you know, this is just another example of a funding opportunity available to students at Barnard. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, I've talked a lot, so I wanted to move on to our student panelists and, you know, hear from them a little bit about their internship experiences and, um, you know, how they went about searching for internships. So, you know, these are the names. <laughs> um, and so, <laughs> so the quest first question that we um, 
we have for students is when did you guys start thinking about internships? You guys are all juniors or seniors. So when did you start thinking about internships and why? And how many internship positions have you guys had so far? So just go down and Aditi, maybe you can start. <laughs> okay, so hello, ag <coughs> hello again. So um, I'm an international student here. I'm from India. So my internships after my freshman and uh, <coughs> sophomore year, some um, were in India. But I started uh, working to foreign internships early spring. Um, the best time, I think, your applications applications for most internships will probably probably be due after the spring break. But it also depends on the kind of internship that you're looking into. For example, um, good research and science research internships or good finance internships have their deadlines early in the spring, January, February. So you really start, need to start working when you, um, depending on the kind of internship that you're looking into. Uh, I think utilizing your winter break to go over your resume, to sort of start looking for internship opportunities, taking some time during your winter break would be a good, uh, um, a good thing to do. So last year I interned, sorry, this summer I interned in DC um, at an environmental not-for-profit organization. And um, I, I found out about, um, so as Valerie said, that Columbia University and Barnard, they have excellent career fairs going on all the time. And I found out about my internship this summer at a career fair over at Columbia. It was a sustainable development career fair. And um, that's where I found out about my internship. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm Claire, and I'm a senior. Um, I got my first um, internship my sophomore year. Um, and I've had two since then. <laughs> I've had, uh, I got my first internship my sophomore year, and I held my internship during the school semester. Um, it was an internship I found from the career development um, job search. It was a different program my sophomore year, but NACELINK. And that was uh, a nonprofit in New York City. Um, my second internship, for which I received the Van Amson Fellowship for, and which I'm still working with, um, I found kind of by non-traditional means. Um, I, I, it is a new nonprofit uh, with a one full-time employee, and I know the full-time employee. <laughs> um, but as Valerie said, career development um, and focusing your, your career goals is really what you take away from an internship. And when there's one full-time employee, the unpaid intern gets to do a lot of legwork and learn a lot on the job. My first internship was um, sophomore year. So I, I think I came to Barnard kind of keeping an eye out for internships. But I wanted to give myself the first year to um, just focus on school, and so I stayed on campus. So I, I did work, but I worked on campus. Um, and my first um, my first internship was the freshman, uh, no, sorry. It was uh, the fall semester of sophomore year. And um, I actually ended up working 20 plus hours a week downtown at a legal recruiting firm. And so that was the one semester where I took an internship, you know, biting off too much or more than I could chew. And so from that, I kind of like scaled back and kind of adjusted. And so I've, I, I took more time off. And then I, I did a arts internship um, the summer after my sophomore year. And then um, I've been interning during the school year as well with the Weatherhead East Asian Institute, which provides the undergraduate grant. Um, so I'm an editorial intern with them. And so they basically give me this, this budget and this um, this magazine and I get to, you know, publish it, create, it, I get to create it, publish it, you know, find writers and, you know, figure out what content is. And so I have this tremendous, you know, um, autonomy when it comes to that. And I think that's one of like my, the greatest internships because there's so, it's so, there's so much support um, and, and it's close, you know, it's on campus so I can walk across the street and do, and go to work when I have time which is the best thing and that's what I learned about um, working off campus my, so my sophomore year and not having that 
that convenience. Um, and um, since then, I mean, in, in, in all, I've had maybe five or six internships. So I, I kind of, I'm, I like to explore, <laughs> and I, I, I take internships to be kind of your time to explore, your time in college to figure out what you want to do. And it doesn't hurt if you figure out that while you're working at an internship, it's not exactly what you want to do because you're getting something out of it. You're seeing an industry work at work, and so it's always helpful. So that's me. Hi, I'm Joy. I'm a junior. Um, so so far, I've had um, four internships: two during the sum one during each summer, and then one during um, the academic school year. But what I've really had to focus on was that I wanted to do something that was less strenuous, <laughs> way less strenuous than 20 hours a week. So I always think what's really important for students to do is to be upfront about that we're a student first, and that. Um, I'm, I've always been very open with my supervisors and saying, you know, oh, it's midterm week, can we cut down on a few hours? So um, I've had different um, experiences. Last summer I worked at the New York State Division of Human Rights where it was a legal internship, um, and that was a great experience. Um, and I've also worked with a few nonprofit organizations. and. So yeah, it's been a great experience. I think that I started thinking about it freshman year. I don't think there's any pressure to have one freshman year, um, as we've all been saying, but it's definitely something to think about. Um, and I agree, I think it's a great time to explore different opportunities, especially if you're someone like me who doesn't really know what they want to do. Um, so yeah, it's been really great. Thank you. Um, you know, a lot of these students have had Eight. <laughs> I think that's that's a, a, a very high number. So don't feel like you have to pressure your students to get an internship right away. But we just recommend a student to have at least done a couple by the time they're a senior. So when they search for a job, they have like a work experience to write down on their resume. Um, okay. So the second question is, how did you find your internship? Some of you already answered that. I think Claire did. Um, but did you use you know our office in trying to locate an internship? Sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shuttling between the two of us. So just to like a quick fact for you that 70% of the jobs slash internships are, fi are, find out, are found out via networking. So networking is really important. And I think career development gives us great resources, students great resources to, to, to network around with alumni or employers. Um, certainly you should encourage um, your, uh, the students to go meet with the counselors. They're really friendly. Valerie's a great counselor. She just started this year, but she's done a great job. <laughs> and the PCAs were student counselors. Ellen is one of them. So, you know, en encourage them to go and meet with them. And career fairs, um, as uh, I, as I mentioned earlier, I found my job um, at a career fair. So, uh, basically, um, uh, Barnard and Columbia they offer a host of um, employer sessions, info sessions, and career fairs that you should always go to, or you know, um, just and uh, come to um, go to the career development and talk about info. So they, um, the career counselors really help you find an internship. So in case you're unsure about what you want to do, you can just go meet with them and talk to them, and they can really guide you with your internship internship search. Because it's not necessary that you know what you want. It's not necessary for you to know what you want to do, but as long as you have that thing of exploring and figuring out what you want to do eventually, that'll you know you're good to go. Yeah. So I already explained how I found my internships, but um, I'm also a senior and I'm also starting to look for what happens when unpaid internships are no longer a reality or possibility. Um, and I have used career development to look through my resume. They're very helpful um, and I've attended some of their workshops that about where they bring on um, alumna to discuss their jobs, um, which is just another way to expose myself to various industries um, without having to commit a full semester to an internship in who knows what industry. Um, I can get a great window in a you know two-hour session. Um. I'll have to admit that my first internship was actually from Craigslist. And while I have tremendous respect for the people, or for, for Craigslist, and I do admit that it works most of the time, um, it does lack a certain screening protection. Uh, 
thing that Barnard offers on Naslink. Um, so when you are on Craigslist, be careful. Make sure your boss is, you know, if she has a clear, make sure she has a clear idea of the job description, is all I'm saying. Um, but um, I definitely agree with Aditi. You know, I think networking is very important. Um, this past summer, I spent um, a, a month interning at a top uh, law firm, a corporate law firm. And um, for the most part, corporate law firms don't take college interns. They take law, like legal interns. And so um, I got that position through networking. It, the position was actually created because I met someone who decided that it would be a good idea for someone like me to get a look at what corporate life is actually like. Um, and so, um, I, I mean, the networking that I, um, that I got this through. It was through it in or, an Asian scholarship organization that I volunteer with. And so through that, I've, like, you, I meet tons of professionals in a very like, friendly setting. And so there's the, it, networking, I feel like for the, a lot of the time, it um, connotes some sort of stressful, like, you know, doggy dog kind of <laughs> setting. But it's not. So I feel like for, for me, networking is kind of just making new friends and sometimes good things happen from new friends and so I got that internship and it, it was a great experience because um, the law f the corporate law firms this the look that I got with co corporate law firms was not something that I could have gotten anywhere else you know I mean I got to work with the lawyers I got to work with all the non-legal departments I got to see how much support you know all the lawyers got and it really kind of focused my own career paths and so it, that's, how, that's my, you know, job search story for that. Um, like a DD, I found my internship at the um, career fair. So basically, I just went around and gave out my resume because, as I said, I had really no idea. Um, so I just was kind of giving out my resume to places that seemed really interesting, and they actually contacted me, which I was. It was it was really great. Um, I didn't even know that they had an internship program, so they contacted me. And um, career development has as everyone's saying, a lot of great services, but also they really help with interviewing skills, and also they have a suitable suits program that we haven't talked about yet, but basically that they have suits that you can rent out. Um, for free, for which, free. No fee. <laughs> yeah, no fee, um, which is great. You go in there, you try on, there's a bunch of sizes. Um, and so they really help you with, you know, what you should wear, and that's I think that's very appropriate, um, that's very, um, important in the interview process. It's really about, you know, how you present yourself professionally. So I was kind of clueless about that. So I got a lot of um, advice about that. Um, so yeah, I, I would just say that if you put yourself out there, um, get a resume that's looking good, um, you can, you know, find yourself with a lot of great opportunities. Yeah, uh, you can also like make appointments with the, the career counselors to schedule mock interviews. And you can rent suits from us. Like I work at the career development and you know, you can rent for free, but you need to get them right clean before you return it to us. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you have the receipt with you. We check it. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, it's, it's, you have a, a bunch of resources um, at Great Development. Very friendly environment. And, you know, just make the most of you of it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. In the interest of full disclosure, Aditi is a student worker at Great <laughs> Development, as well as Joy. Yeah. So, they know a lot about the office. Yeah. We're very familiar with them. And yeah. they're really great student workers, as well, um, as they've <laughs> had really great internship experiences. Um, yeah. So, um, I just wanted to mention that, you know, a lot of the things that employ employers give us feedback on our students. And um, the one thing that we hear consistently is that Barnard students need to work more on their interview skills. Mm -hmm. um, so, we do try to push that. We do do mock interviews where students come in. We offer to record the whole interview session where we are the interviewer and they're the interviewee. Sometimes, you know, they, we encourage them to dress in interview attire and come in and treat it like a real interview. And then we record the whole session and then we play it back and explain <laughs> what it works and what doesn't work. A lot of students tend to ramble on. <laughs> a lot of students, you know, use a lot of hand gestures when they speak. So when they look at the video, they will see that. And it's actually quite effective, I think, in helping them with their interviewing skills. Okay. So the third question is, please tell us about your most recent internship experiences, because a lot of you guys have had multiple internship experiences. Um, I love you mentioned where you interned already, but do you know what, what did you guys do when you, when you worked there? So um, this past summer, I was interning at Environment America. It's um, it's a federation of 28 state-based environmental advocacy groups headquartered in DC, which is where I was. 
and I was a field intern. So I was basically liaising with a lot of state-based um, staff members, advocacy members, other environmental groups um, to organize a lot of media events, especially around uh, when important um, legislations were about to be passed in the House or the Senate. And it was really interesting meeting with a bunch of congressmen and senators, you know? Like, it was, um, it was a very novel experience to share our research findings and advocate support for um, important um, environmental bills. I also did a lot of um, research work, like created databases um, on different uh, environmental issues. So like this season, this past summer, the Gulf spill was like a hot topic. And um, I did a lot of work on that. Uh, I wrote a bunch of letter, letter to editors um, and uh, opinion pieces and news releases. So yeah, it was an interesting internship and I, I my whole, what I was hoping for to gain from this internship is to learn more about environment and how policy making affects in, uh, environmental sustainability because that's what I want to pursue. I'm interested in sustainable development. That's like a career, a career goal. Um, so I think this was a way good, great start for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm currently interning at this not-for-profit um, in the South Bronx. It's called Start Small, Think Big. Uh, it is an organization that brings in high-quality programs and services to allow low-income individuals to reach financial um, independence and really empower them financially. So what does that mean for me? Um, it means that our organization contacts and works closely with partner organizations in many different industries. So that's a big bonus for me. I get to see what it looks like to have a financial counselor who's employed partially by the city, partially by a private organization, um, come into community centers. So I'm, I'm exposed to all of those different organizations through that one individual, and that's one program, one service that we provide. Um, on the flip side, I'm working within a community-based program, a community-based organization in the South Bronx. So I'm learning about the, what the social services that are provided to the community. I'm learning about the community needs. This is a brand new program, so we actually are, are building the services that we provide around the feedback from the clients that we work with. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that I'm getting out of this internship, including um, a greater experience in New York City. I didn't study abroad. Um, I'm from San Francisco, and I tell people that New York City is abroad. <laughs> um, and I, I definitely feel that at my la my previous internship was also um, a New York City based uh, program that I worked with New York City public schools and a program in those schools and went to Queens a lot. So I see my internships as not only a way to identify career paths, um, both through the people I'm exposed to, the industries I'm exposed to, and the responsibilities I get at this internship. I'm working on everything from kind of publicity and outreach both with our clients and to potential um, donors but also on what it takes to internally operate a successful organization what kind of data needs to be collected um, in a database etc and and I've really appreciated getting to do um, getting to do all of those things using New York City really as my classroom for all of that. Um, so as I, as I said earlier, I spent a month this past summer um, at a corporate law firm. And so that was one of those internships that um, was a, a lot of learning and less doing, which makes sense because I don't have the legal expertise to actually do anything useful in a law firm. Um, so it was a lot of learning, it was a lot of observing, you know, the corporate culture and kind of trying to, f figuring out if I can see myself in that kind of setting. Um, <coughs> earlier, that, earlier this summer, I worked at the New York Immigration Coalition, um, which is a not-for-profit not also, 
and um, this was right after um, Arizona passed uh, SB 1070, and so the organization was working on a lot of advocacy, and I was able to participate in both the brainstorming of, you know, uh, advocacy uh, events or, you know, rallies and whatnot, and also kind of putting it into action. So attending community meetings and also kind of calling, calling, um, calling all the I guess the participants, like the the political participants, and doing research on um, local officials, and so it was kind of like a huge contrast in terms of what I was doing because I was m way more active. I was learning, but I was also doing a lot. Um, and then the uh, summer before that, I worked at a um, museum, um, the Museum of the City of New York, as a development intern, and so I was there I was given an entire project you know I I was the grants intern so I was given two education programs and my my job was to contact foundations and um, develop proposals to ask for funding for our programs and so I mean what I've what I've been doing kind of ranges but the and as well as the responsibilities but it gives me an, like a really good idea of what like what's out there and what I want to do so there's that. Um, as I said before, last summer, or this summer, um, I interned with the New York State Division of Human Rights. And it was really great because I got to investigate cases um, of discrimination complaints. So um, whether it was sex, race, um, sexual orientation, religion, anything. And I was given a lot of responsibility, um, which was great. I think it's really awesome to find internships that you're not just kind of going to get coffee for someone, um, which sometimes that's a reality, but I've been really trying to find places where I can actually kind of have some kind of career development in the way that I get exposed to different things. Um, so yeah, it was great. I got to collaborate with lawyers, um, complainants, respondents, a lot of people, and I also got to um, interview people, which was interesting to be on the other side. Um, and I also got to use my Spanish skills working with you know immigrant um, population. So that was great. Um, and so, yeah, I think that sometimes you might have to, you might um, in certain internships actually do those kind of menial tasks, which I'm not saying is, I mean, I think that's important sometimes, but um, I think it's good to be able to dif differentiate between ha having a balance of actual an internship where you're actually doing something that matters, I guess, um, in the long run. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, so a lot of if you, your student has not had any internship experiences and for her first internship, it may be that she may be doing more quote unquote menial tasks, but you know, just keep in mind that that kind of position is going to lead her up the ladder to do more substantive work later. So um, it, internships are just a way to expose students to industries. So, um, you know, and, but, but like Ellen said, you should fed out the employer and make sure that the internship position is going to be a substantive one. It's not gonna be a waste of your time. Um, and we do that through Nace Link. We, we fed out the employer. We don't post everything that we get. We, we do do some research into it to make sure that it's going to be uh, quite a substantive experience before we post it on our system for students. And yeah, I also have a point that the more proactive you are about your internship research, the more likely you'll find a quality internship and the less likely you'll be doing, find, you know, getting coffee for people. So <laughs> actually, I have another point about that. So I. For me, I think it, I have this policy where I'm always keeping an eye out for really good opportunities, you know, year round. And while opportunities not, are not necessarily always accepting op applications or whatnot, I just al I always put it in my Google Calendar. So like I like you know go go ahead to like May of 2011, and I put in a note for myself to like check this organization or check check this opportunity or look it up and see if it's still available. And so these kind of notes to myself like helps me, remi like reminds myself that there are these opportunities out there and so I'm not, you know, come May scrambling to find something because I have in my calendar all these things that I've put in over, mm -hmm. over months at a time. So that's what I do. And I just want to add that my, for my first internship, I actually interviewed at um, several different inter um, internships. Uh, there were ones that sounded really great on the NACE link at well-known uh, media publications doing really interesting work with documentaries. I thought I would get a really great exposure to a huge 
field and and see the world. And it turned out it was seeing the world through a very small office on Wall Street. And my tasks very quickly, I realized, would be um, like rewinding things. And that <laughs> sounded like really awful to me. So um, I continue to go and, and, inter and interview at different internships, and especially when you're dealing with an unpaid internship, as more and more of them are, that's kind of your, you know, your only power <laughs> is picking something that you're going to enjoy doing and, and going and seeing what you're going to be doing at this supposedly amazing place. <laughs> um, so I, our next question is, what did you guys learn from your internships, and how do your internship experiences connect to your career goals? Because most of you are seniors. So I just want to see how you think that internship's going to influence your career decisions. So one thing, before I began my internship, I knew for sure that I want to save the environment, save the world, stuff like that. <laughs> That's all I knew. So I was like, oh, so what, what can we do with that, you know? Um, so I found out about this internship at the Sustainability Career Fair. I applied, and they, and I, and I ended up doing a lot of work, learning a lot on the job, uh, learning about effective advocacy for the environment, which I want to do once I go back. I want to join the environmental movement back home in India. So that was a great thing to know. Um, I gained a lot of knowledge on how how the system works, how governance works, especially relating relating to something that matters the most to me, which is you know the environment. So that was great, you know, meeting with a bunch of congressmen and senators. I mean, come on, you know. And um, what else? I um, so the thing is, when I'm talking about environment sustainability, I want to know how the industry and the administration shape um, environmental laws and how how they're related. So I thought, you know, getting an internship where I'm learning about how environmental policy affects environment uh, affects the environment and would be a great way to inform my future goal which is to basically pursue an MBA in a business environment sort of a field so yeah I think um, it was um, it was uh, it was a great way to see how how related how how, inter how closely related policy making and environment uh, environment um, is yeah so um, you can tell that I'm also a Barnard student because I also plan on saving the world. <laughs> it's something that um, you'll find more often than that, I think, amongst my classmates. Um, so I thought I was going to do that through um, nonprofit service work. And maybe I will. But what I learned from my internships is there's really a lot of ways to make change. Um, and again, getting the experience and the exposure to a lot of different industries, um, you see where different people are taking that mission and their calling. Um, so where does that leave me? It has led me in a greater interest in how these great ideas to save the world are organized and executed. Um, I think that that is something that I'm interested in pursuing more um, and learning from, from more um, successful types of organizational um, structures, how to do that. Um, I don't think, I've learned from my internship that, again, it's not necessarily the, um, while I get to work every day towards a common mission, what I'm doing is really affected, or how I feel about what I'm doing is really affected by my day-to-day -day reality and tasks. So I'm looking into, into broadening my range of experiences as I go out to find my new job. Um, and that's as kind of specific as I can be for my post-May plans. Um, well, I'm also a senior, and as I mentioned before, um, I have all I've been all about exploring so I've explored a lot and I'm not sure I figured out what I want to do but I've learned a lot about what I don't want to do 
And I've learned a lot about myself in terms of what kind of situations I enjoy working at, working in, or um, what kind of people I want to work around. And so I think that's what I've taken away from my internships as a whole. Um, I've also realized that I like, you know, I like leading. I like making decisions. I like, you know, problem solving. I like, you know, taking a real life situation and trying to figure out what causes it and how to fix it. And that is something that I've learned through all the different internships that I've had, you know, by sitting, sitting in on staff meetings where, you know, full-time staff are discussing their problems and just having that kind of outside view, out, like that outside perspective and being able to bring that to the table. And all of that I've, I've kind of drawn out from my internship experiences. Another thing that I've learned about from my internships is just uh, being able to interact in professional settings. I think as a student, that's something that you don't get in the classroom. You know, you don't get to see what professional relationships are like. And even within professional relationships, it differs within industry, within, you know, the, even the company. And so being able to see like a wide variety of what kind of the professional world is like, not only kind of informs your own decisions in terms of where you, like what kind of job you want, but also it helps you when, when you're out there, you know, you, so you don't end up looking kind of silly and like naive and sheltered, you know. And so that's another thing that um, I've drawn out from my internships. As for my post-May plans, mm -hmm. in terms of how my internship experiences connect, um, I'm currently applying to law school. And I would say that my internship experiences have connect only, <laughs> only in the ways that it's taught me about myself. And so that's, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Um, I'm fortunately not a senior, <laughs> um, so I still have some a little time left. Um, so what I've learned really from my internships um, is about um, relationships with um, supervisors. I've really had a great um, amount of relationships with my supervisor. I think that it um, it's all about communication and it's all about really being open and honest about your goals and you know what you're struggling with and I've also learned a lot about my strengths and weaknesses within my internships um, and I've really loved to get that feedback from my supervisors like hey like what can I work on and so some, sometimes it's kind of hard to hear certain things but I think it's really helped me um, kind of get to know myself better um, and also get to know, you know, in what organizations, in what places can I see my strengths being yet best used. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't even think it really matters all the time what internship you get, but just kind of, um, just to make the most out of each internship, even if it might not be the best opportunity and the best kind of, the most exciting job. So I think what I've really um, learned from my internships is just an exposure. Um, I think that's the best word that I can use to different, different people um, and a different um, work environments. So. Okay, great. So, this is the financial question: Were your internship positions paid or unpaid? And please tell us about any grants or fellowships that you've received and what you thought about the application process. So the good thing about a non-for-profit organization is that they're trying to save the world in some way or the other, but they don't pay you, you know? <laughs> so I did apply for a grant. I applied for the alumni and donor-sponsored internship grant. And as Valerie mentioned, that, that grant, you know, even though you get a college-subsidized housing, if you're in the city, you don't, you don't have a, a housing opportunity if you're working outside of the city, but they still give you the grant, whether you are within the states or anywhere else um, in, the, in the world. Um, so that's what I applied for, and I got the grant, um, around $2,000, I think, for the summer. And uh, the, the, um, the application process is like a bunch of essays and your resume, but uh, the good thing about this internship grant is that you uh, you have an online discussion um, website where basically students are sharing the internship experience from time to time on, on a weekly basis. So that's a sort of a learning experience in itself. And the requirements, uh, you know, you attend if you're off campus, if you're uh, outside New, um, of the city of New York City, you attend you attend a webinar, which is basically like which is a half an hour. Um, 
seminar, online seminar hosted by one of the career counselors at Barnard Career Development. And the student presentation that Valerie was talking about is all the way in spring, around April, uh, where you basically have, you make a presentation of what you did over the summer or your spring, or your spring internship or your fall internship. And you meet with your donor or the alumna who sponsored the internship. So that's again a great way of networking with, uh, a great networking opportunity with alumni and other donors. So a um, lot of um, funding opportunities on campus. I am also um, the student coordinator for the Hughes Science Pipeline project on, uh, at Barnard, where we basically invite alumni from different science um, professional fields to come and chat with students on a very informal basis, chat with a small group of students on a very informal basis so as to inform the career paths. And there's something called um, the huge science student science panel that I organize every year. And this year it's on the 16th of November over at Career Development uh, in the evening. And I basically invite a lot of students, a, a panel of students, five or six students who had science internships uh, over the summer to talk about how they go went about finding internships and how they went about finding um, grants for the internship. Like, uh, so a lot of funding opportunities on campus um, for your internships. So certainly you should not be only just chasing money when you're looking for internships, but it's, as um, mentioned earlier, it's a lot about the experience and the exposure and to, you know, the fact that you get to know more about yourself. My first internship, um, though with a not-for-profit, was paid, and that was um, two semesters, so that worked out nicely. And then when I began um, my second internship, I did a semester of unpaid work and then applied for the Van Amson Fellowship Program, which I didn't know too much about before applying to it. Uh, it's through Community Impact, which is actually a not-for-profit embedded within Columbia University, which is a whole new system that I was exposed to. That application process was pretty straightforward, um, cover letter, resume, short application. So that was for the summer. And then, and it involved uh, weekly exchanges with my peer fellows and uh, beginning dinner in a capstone um, brunch with a lot of different, um, it was great, Valerie was there. <laughs> there was a lot of um, different um, people, both from Columbia and Barnard staff, as well as uh, community members who were involved with Community Impact, including Mr. Van Amson, which was great to put a face to his namesake. Now I'm currently receiving funding for my internship with one of the Barnard alumna sponsored grant applications and again that is a pretty straightforward application and it's it's great that career development takes it as seriously as they do um, because it made me look through my resume very closely again and as I try to narrow down my post-May plans. It's something that I'm returning to um, again and again. Um, well, I have actually been very lucky. All my internships have been paid, either by the employer um, or by some outside organization. And believe it or not, there are actually a lot of, or quite a bit of, quite a few organizations out there who will, who, um, will sponsor internships. And in addition to what Barnard offers, there are organizations out there, I mean, even in DC, who will you know, sponsor a, uh, internships in DC. Um, so I think I've been very lucky in that respect. Um, my, the summer I spent working at the Museum of the City of New York, I was actually sponsored by um, a program called Arts Intern. Which it's great because they they have uh, interns in arts museums all across the city, and once a week we meet and go to one of those museums, and we're paid to do it. <laughs> As a museum buff, that was like amazing to me, because um, I would I would pay to go to a museum, and now I was getting paid to go to one. Um, so there's that. Um, this past summer, I, uh, when I was at the New York Immigration Coalition, I was sponsored by um, an Asian civic organization called the Korean American uh, League for Civic Action. Um, not 
only for Korean Americans. I am not Korean American. Uh, but I mean, there are lots of organizations out there who um, who have funding and who do want to kind of sponsor st students going into specific fields, and will go through that extra mile to to you know ensure that. And a lot. And um, in addition, these programs also have tremendous support within themselves. You know, um, the Korean American League for Civic Action had an entire mentorship program where I had four four professional mentors who just always kept in close contact with me and, you know, uh, just made sure that I was on the right track. Um, the arts intern program, we were always doing, going to panels um, and learning about our careers in the arts, which is something that I thought once upon a time I was interested in. So um, that those are two, uh, two programs, uh, two grant programs that I have been lucky to res uh, be a part of. Um, and my other internships were paid directly from the employer. Um, out of my four internships, two were paid and two were unpaid. Um, I took the unpaid ones during the school year because I also have a part-time job, so I think that was a good balance. Um, um, and I think a lot of times, especially with smaller organizations, they, they, they cannot fund you and I don't think that that should be, I know um, coming from a background where you know I can't afford to just not be making money at any time. I think that I've had to make a few sacrifices in that even though they're unpaid, they're still really good um, experiences. And I think that, you know, as long as you work hard, you know, to, um, in your job on campus or whatever way you're getting um, financial aid, um, I think it's really important to not just shy away from getting unpaid internships because some of them are the best experiences ever. Um, and so this past summer, I also received an alumni grant. Um, which was great because I got really subsidized housing to live in the city and everyone was really jealous of how little I had to pay for um, housing in the city and it was great to stay in the city during the summer. It's a completely different environment especially for college students. Um, it's a beautiful city in the summer even though it's pretty hot but it's, it's great. I would really recommend for all Barnard students to at least spend one summer here. I think it's great. Okay. so. The very last question that we have to wrap up the discussion, um, a lot of you guys, actually all of you, have internship or job positions during this school year. So how do you guys balance your internship or job position with your academics? So uh, I have two jobs. I'm a senior, and I'm doing a bunch of extracurricular activities. So that's a lot of multitasking. So I think to begin with, you should know that what you can do, you should know, you know, how much you can do at a time. Like, I love to multitask. If I don't do that, then I just feel useless. <laughs> so, you know, you should know where to stop and what are your um, abilities. That's really important. Um, I don't have um, an internship. Like, I have a job right now, but not an internship during the academic year. But uh, whenever I'm, uh, my, to my first job, which is as a office intern at Barnard Creek Development, um, I make sure that I know my courses well within the first two weeks of the shopping period so that I can set my work hours. So, I, uh, so you know, I figure out time for my academics, that I have enough time for studies, I have time to work and make enough money to pay my bills, and, you know, I'm, and other things on campus as well, and time for other things on campus as well. So that's really important. Um, and my other job is not a lot of intensive in terms of our requirements because it's just a bunch of a lot of emailing and networking so you know just basically it's it's been pretty uh, I have a lot of um, uh, freedom as to how how many hours I can work with that per week so I think um, um, in a nutshell is about knowing what you can do and what's important so setting you know setting your priorities right knowing what you want to do how you want to invest time during your college life do you want to you know, be really focused. If you're pre-med, you want to be really focused on your studies to, or whatever, or you want to, whatever, join a bunch of clubs, or you want to work, make more money. So I guess, and reiterating the value that career development uh, holds at the, um, uh, regarding all this is that, you know, you just can go meet with the career counselors and tell them whatever, the sad story of your life that I don't know what I want to do, I want to work, but I don't have the time. <laughs> They'll help you with anything, like as simple as a question that I want to find an internship, but I have no idea what I want to do. So just be feel free to feel free um, with them. Yeah. 
I think that this question is often uh, asked to talk about how can you do it all. Um, and something that I've been told that I think really resonates is you can do it all, just not all at one time. So for me, that means what is it that I want to balance? And it's really my time. Um, say, noting that if you look at my academic transcript, my best grades happened my freshman year. My freshman year, I didn't have an internship. Every other um, every other semester, I did. Am I okay with that? Yeah, I like would not change that for anything. I need that balance between academics and kind of practical personal development is what I will call this career development portion. And so knowing what it is that you are trying to balance is definitely important. Um, this semester, and previous semesters actually, I'm, I'm a full-time student, which sometimes I say I just play a student on TV. But I, I enjoy school and I love, I love the learning um, grades. They are, they are what I, I know I can put into them. Um, I'm a student, uh, I'm a student employed, I'm part of the student employment, I have a job on campus. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a name for that. Um, and I have an internship. And again, I really enjoy getting to do all of those things and I'm taking five classes because I can't bear to drop one of them because I enjoy them all. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get an A in all of those classes. That would be an absolute amazing thing um, that maybe some of my peers could do. But I, I know that for me, what keeps me sane is keeping this diversity on my plate. I would have to echo both Claire and Aditi. Um, I, as a senior, I'm a double major, so I'm fulfilling two sets of major requirements on top of, I started the semester with three jobs, and um, I'm involved in, like, I think three extracurricular activities. So it's definitely a very tough balance, but I think my fiasco of an internship my sophomore year really taught me a lot in terms of being able to balance, being able to communicate with my supervisors, and, you know, knowing my limits. Um, and also working on campus cuts down a lot of travel time. So the hour and a half that I spent every day on the train sophomore year, I spend in bed sleeping. <laughs> uh, um, and also another really good thing about uh, one of my internships on campus um, at the Weatherhead Institute is that it's very, very flexible. So I have two, hour, two office hours in the office, but the rest of the week I can do my work whenever I want. So at 2 a.m. when I'm like sitting in, like in bed, I can be doing my work and logging those hours. And so that flexibility and my ability, my like, uh, my kind of relationship with my supervisor really helps, you know, with managing, um, managing the work, especially because you know call, it's it's very unpredictable. You know, you might get sick or you might have a big paper coming up, and so you have to be flexible about these things. Um, and so I think. Maintaining that kind of open communication and knowing your limits and um, learning from your mistakes, um, you kind of you you get it down by the end of senior year. <laughs> you, 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 by the end, of, by the time you graduate, you'll figure it out. <laughs> um, I think that it's important to not become over involved. I think that's a it's a big pressure here. Um, honestly, is to do everything, and I think that you have to realize that. Um, as Clara said, you can't do everything. Um, so I have a job on campus, um, which is kind of steady. And, I, and as I said before, it's really important to be honest with your supervisor that we're students first and that some weeks I might have to cut down because I am stressed out by school. Or um, it's just being really honest about where you're at. And um, I think that's important. Um, and also just making sure you have time to sleep and eat. And I <laughs> And I know that sounds silly, but a lot of people just don't do that. And I think that it's it's much more important to be healthy and to be happy while you're doing all your things. Um, and and like instead of just jamming, pack your schedule that you can't even enjoy what you're doing. 
And it's also probably more efficient because when you get sick from not sleeping, not eating, you're, you lose maybe a week of work. <laughs> so if you take a couple hours each day to eat and sleep, you stay on top of everything. <laughs> Um, so that's the end of our presentation. Um, it's already four o'clock or five past four, so you know, feel free to go. But you know, we'll be staying here to answer any questions that you guys have. So thank you to our students.